everybody? My name is Adam and welcome back to Street Brawler's Muscle. As you can see by the title, we are installing an inline high pressure EFI fuel pump today on my Mustang. We're tossing out that old surge tank that you guys might have seen in old videos because Michael hates it and it probably wasn't ever a good idea. And it's not an HRA legal and I want to bring that thing to the drag strip. So we're putting in a high pressure AEM pump. I'll show you a video of it now. But the box looks pretty, so I'm hoping the pump itself is pretty. Ooh, we got some bubble wrap, my favorite. Oh, free fittings, let's go. The fittings are clutch. Oh, ooh, smell that. It's got all the, uh, the testing fluid or whatever in there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she smells rank in here. Oh, it looks good. It feels like good. It feels it looks nice. like a barely, like, half the size of the surge tank did. So I was just editing this video and figured I'd give you guys a little more info on this pump I got. So here it is right here on AEM's website. It's a 501005. And the reason I picked this pump was because I looked at Real Street's test of all these pumps. And this is a conventional 044 style pump, which is the really popular Bosch. So as you can see, the packaging is very similar, but it outperforms the Bosch by quite a bit. Here at 60 PSI, where we're going to be at for the Sniper, the Bosch did 280 liters per hour, whereas the AEM I just grabbed got 320. So here it is on Summit, it's 152 bucks US. Strongly recommend this for people wanting a budget friendly inline fuel pump that's going to do the job and support enough horsepower in the future. And that thing's going to go inline right from the back. So we're cutting up the AN line now. So it's going to be all in, all hard line. It's going to be real nice and I'm excited to be less bunk. Nice and spicy. Super spicy, so let's get to it. As you can see, that's my surge tank in there. Took the first couple lines off to drain the fuel, but it's a whole whack of mess right now. Bunch of rubber line. We got two filters that were sitting behind the throttle body there. There's the 10 micron that I need to use for the sniper. Here's the before the pump. And there's the surge tank that was sitting in here with the pump to Bring it up to EFI standards and feeding that thing was a mechanical pump. So we're taking all that out, putting one simple inline pump in the back and it's gonna be a whole lot cleaner with braided AN line and not this rubber Medusa mess. Chuck. <laughs> so we just cut the barb off this little guy right here. Mm -hmm. Michael got her nice and clean with the pipe cutter. Now. We got the special AN fitting here that's got this neural. And you get this bad boy right here. You give her the old stick on. Put this on. Like that. And then goes this. And then they just screw together and pinch that boy down. And they screw together and pinch that boy down. Now, one nice thing I like to do is to kind of make this flush here. And the way you know, because like it's hard, it might be hard to tell because this might try to come off, right? is you just put it in here like that and then screw onto this. You're holding this into the line and you're screwing this onto the line. So here's the bay as you can see a little bit of a mess but we'll clean it up later. Um, I just showed you guys that fitting in there under the proportioning valve for the brakes and so the AN lines is going to come around back enter the sniper here and the return is going to come out there where the fuel pressure regulator is and go straight into this 5 16 hard line barb. I'm pretty sure that's the minimum you can have as a return line. So keep that in mind. Bigger would be nice, but that's what we got stock, so that's what I'm going to use. Take your fitting, put it on the line, and then as you can see in the fitting, there's kind of like threads in there. See that? Mm -hmm. So this actually kind of bites onto the line already and you gotta it's key like it's key 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 that this line is all the way butted inside this fitting so you gotta do everything you can to make sure it gets all the way on there you gotta make sure it's on there because if it isn't it'll push it out I like to put a piece of tape at the bottom just to let me know if the hose slips at all that would be not good, it could leak. So I just usually leave like, usually like a millimeter, just like that. And if this area grows bigger, I know that the fitting is coming off. So fitting goes in here. You kind of have to shove it in there the first little bit until it grabs the thread. And you hear it, you can hear a little click. Yes. And now what you're watching for is you gotta make sure 
that it doesn't shove this off because clearly the fitting is not going to work if it gets shoved off, right? So you can give it like a final little crank, make sure it's on there all the way. And then you're holding one and you're turning in. So holding one, turning in. So what we can do is you can wash this area because if this starts to push this out, we know we have to, we've got like a, you know, a failed attempt. You just crank her in. You can hear her biting. And so obviously I'm also pushing the hose back in to the fitting just to kind of keep it going in nice and smooth. But that's the reason why we put this piece of tape here because if this starts to shove out, we know. So, right now we're just gonna clean out the AN line because you know it could have little shavings in it. So Michael's just gonna blast it with brake clean and some compressed air. This is key, you gotta do this. Cause you get, sometimes you get little shavings and stuff. I think that looks freaking fantastic, boy. All right, so as you can see, it's going along nicely. It looks really cool in there, so I'm pumped up. Now we're gonna put in this Earl's fuel pressure gauge. It goes all the way up to 100 PSI, which is dope. This is in line, so I got an in line fitting. So this will go right in behind the sniper, and now I'll have fuel pressure, because that's quite essential for a sniper in troubleshooting. And yeah, I grabbed this baby from EFI Systems Pro, and they were great, so I recommend you go check them out. And over here, you got the monstrosity that will be my new fuel setup. Bunch of fittings everywhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, his laser light, dude. What? Huh? I was looking for that light. Oh. Anyway, we're under here now. Ow, ow. Oh, you alright? You alright? I'm bleeding slightly. We're under here, and there's the fuel pump roughly mounted. No, it's not gonna sit like that. This is just. Roughly mounted. We got the pickup right there. So we got it as close to zero incline as possible. We'll make some shielding and stuff for it. Cover the exhaust, obviously, and get that filter off there. So that's what's going on now. And uh, we're going to continue the mountages with the filter over there. Right. Look at this system. We're just gonna put some direct power to the pump now to hear this bastard. I really like that. Oh, maybe this pump uses a lot of power. <laughs> just might. So there's the setup right there. We got the pump, pre filter, after filter. It's going to get some bracing after to shield it from the wheel, but this is what it is for now, and here's how she sounds. She's a loud boy. Damn. Restore. Oh. <laughs> we just, we just got to put oil in her now because we did an oil change. And yeah, that's going to wrap up the fuel system and all the miscellaneous stuff that we did, and hopefully... You know, she, she starts and runs for the first time in a long time. All right, so we're about to start this thing. Getting excited, we're gonna build some fuel pressure first, and then, I mean, some oil pressure, and then uh, give her a rip. Five minutes later. Nice.